If you're looking for generational wealth, Alibaba may be one of those companies that should be in your portfolio. In this video, we're going to be covering the five catalysts that could take this beaten down stock much higher. You're watching more money. Let's get it. What's up guys and welcome to the channel where we focus on doing the best investment research possible and if you're returning welcome back so let's get into it. Okay the first major catalyst for Alibaba will be the continued emergence of the cloud business in China. This is a digital technology and intelligence backbone of Alibaba group. From this chart you can see that Alibaba is the largest cloud provider in China. No one is even close guys and so as this market continues to develop Alibaba is positioned to own this space. If you recall despite all of the regulatory challenges in the first quarter of 2021 the cloud cloud business grew at a rate of approximately 30% and remains profitable. Not even Alphabet's cloud business is profitable yet, which shows just how much of a feat this is. Now make no mistake, an investment in BABA is largely a play on the emergence of Alibaba developing into a major Chinese cloud services powerhouse. In a 2018 interview, Alibaba CEO Daniel Zhang told CNBC that cloud computing would become Alibaba's main business in the future. He has said that cloud is the kind of opportunity that only comes around once in a generation and that the world is in the infancy stage of the global cloud era. And based on Alibaba's leading market position in the cloud space, it's easy to see that Alibaba can remain the dominant cloud-based provider in in China and continue to ride this wave of global growth. I agree with Daniel Zhang. I really feel that this segment could be their largest and most profitable segment, just like how Amazon did it in North America. The second major catalyst for Alibaba is the eventual IPO of Ant Group. Ant Group owns China's largest digital payments platform, Alipay. And it's much more than just a payments platform. It's basically a financial supermarket that allows you to do everything on your cell phone, which includes buying insurance, making investments, and getting loans. Now, if you guys recall, in October of 2020, Ant Group was set to raise 34.5 billion US dollars in the world's largest IPO at the time, valuing the company at approximately 313 billion, of which Alibaba owned a third of. But as you guys are aware, regulators made the very hard decision to cancel the Ant IPO. IPO of a national hero in China and the CPP party member Jack Ma to avoid another potential P2P loan credit bubble. Since then, the CPP has decided to break up Antpay, separating out the loans business into essentially a different company. They also stripped out the credit rating business, which is essentially falling into CCP control now. So with all of this less than stellar news, you would ask, what is the catalyst here? Well, a large part of the year-to-date decline in the share price for Alibaba has been the whole Ant Group situation. People who are bullish on the stock and are valuing it at the approximate $300 per share range have largely discounted out any growth from Ant Group into perpetuity. There's so much uncertainty with Ant Group that I'm not giving them any material contribution or growth into my valuation, which arrives at approximately $300 a share. So does this mean that Ant Group is dead? Actually the opposite. If you read in between the lines, the Financial Post article confirmed to us that it's obvious that Ant Group isn't dead and the regulatory activities are an indication that this thing now has a much better shot at IPOing within 12 months than it did before. When the news is inevitably released that Ant is finally able to IPO, even if that IPO is done at approximately half the initial valuation of approximately $300 billion, this has the ability to seriously prop up the beaten down Alibaba share price for one important reason, which is that value investors like us will now have the information necessary to forecast a business out and apply a real intrinsic value to it. This action has a likelihood to take all of our valuations up on BABA at the same time. The third major catalyst for Alibaba will be the resiliency of the Chinese middle class. Everyone agrees that the Chinese middle class is continuing their emergence or do they? The Evergrande situation has shown that some investors are beginning to lose confidence in the economy and believe that this situation could seriously hurt the Chinese consumer. Hence the recent decline in the Alibaba share price. But do these short-term issues really have a pervasive impact on the long-term emergence of the Chinese middle class? I'm not convinced. As shown in this diagram, the number of people living on less than 13,000 RMB per year is expected to significantly decline from approximately 37% in 2015 to approximately 11% by 2030. Additionally, you can see how the upper and high class populations are expected to experience considerable growth. So what does this mean? Well, we expect that the spending of the average Chinese consumer is expected to seriously take off to match that of the average consumer spending of other countries in the region in the key spending areas such as household goods and services, housing and household fuels, clothing and footwear, 
and the food categories. Also, if you recall, unlike many of the developed nations, a significant portion of Chinese consumers are not yet on the internet. From this chart, you can see that only 68% of the country is on the internet. This suggests that there is a 50% upside from here if the internet user base is to match that of the developed nations. As more and more Chinese consumers emerge into the middle class and begin to log on to the internet and start consuming with more and more disposable income, the Alibaba ecosystem is expected to continue to explode. So with so much pessimism built into the share price of Alibaba and the recent less than impressive consumer sales growth figure, all we need is a couple of years of continued strong consumer spending growth to really surge the Alibaba share price. The fourth major catalyst for Alibaba can potentially be inflation. What the Evergrande situation triggered in my mind is that if there is a meltdown in China from the Evergrande situation, what options do the financial regulators have? They're not gonna let the companies default on their loans and send shockwaves throughout the economy. They will do exactly what the rest of the world has done and turn on the printing presses to quantitatively ease their way out of the economic meltdown. We all know what the impact would be and so we'd all have to expect a little bit of inflation in the Chinese economy. In a situation like that, if vendors are charging higher prices and buyers are accepting those higher prices, a middleman like Alibaba who takes a percentage of the transaction will only naturally benefit from the increased dollar value of the transactions. Also, if inflation is really taking hold, Alibaba's online retail cloud computing and payments businesses are such that they can raise prices without having too much pushback. So overall inflationary pressures from potential quantitative easing in China can serve to benefit the Alibaba shareholder to an extent. If we have hyperinflation, which I think is very unlikely, but if it did happen, all bets are off. The fifth major catalyst for Alibaba will undoubtedly be a reprieve from the regulatory pressures that the company has been facing thus far in 2021. A large reason why the institutional investors have left China is because the country CCP has become largely unpredictable with what industry they're going to go after next. And they will not hesitate to turn a whole for-profit industry like the for-profit education industry into a non-profit business. This is a real pain point for investors that need stability and predictability. Well, this too can pass. Once the CCP is done with their regulatory actions over the technology companies, any believable sign to the market that they are done could signal the share prices to go much higher. If I've learned anything with the market and investing for so many years, it's that the market does have a short-term memory. So a few years of inaction and consistent messaging that the regulatory issues are in the past can really skyrocket the valuations of these tech names in China. Especially if that's coupled with the other catalysts, such as continued growth of the online retail business, and cloud computing businesses. Now, for those of you that have stuck around to the end of this video, I have one special bonus catalyst for you, which is the Alibaba share repurchases. You may have missed this in the tidal wave of bad news, but because the underlying businesses have continued to do well in 2021, management have actually increased the share repurchase authorization to US $15 billion from US $10 billion. And with an ADR market cap of approximately $400 billion, that represents approximately 4% of the outstanding shareholder base. The lower the share price goes, the more accretive these share repurchases become. And they can become a catalyst to take the share prices much higher. Now, understanding the catalysts are all well and good, but you're probably wondering what are the potential risks of Alibaba? I've got you covered. To see the risks associated with investing in Alibaba in approximately one minute, click right here.